So it's time for the first Aprilia Super Teen race. Riders like Katie Stoner back in 2000 won an epic race around here and we have seen some awesome stuff over the last couple of seasons. Georgina Polden here, number 27, she won another race yesterday. She's yet to win one on TV day though, and that's the one she wants to do. Rory Skinner, number 11, leads the championship. Joe Thompson is looking for a couple of decent finishes. I'm gonna get in the commentary box because I'm getting overpowered by two stroke fumes. So here we go then. Well, uh, those guys don't look so lively at the moment, but they will be in a minute when the super teens get going. The championship that's been sponsored by Dunlop and Nitro. Of course, Nitro newcomers out there, first timers. But a championship on the whole for 12 to 18 year olds, setting their sights on a motorcycle racing career. That man there, the young man, Rory Skinner, number 11 from Scotland, currently leads the championship from 74, Joe Thompson. There's Jordan Boyle. He's done well in qualifying and uh, really, really, really quick. And he'll be looking for uh, an overall race win that he's not been able to get so far this season. Georgina Bolden, she is number 27 there, middle of the front row. And away we go. What's going to happen here at the moment? Georgina Polden uh, closed in on Joe Thompson in second in the championship yesterday, courtesy of Joe not finishing one of the races. So we really have got three people fighting for this Super Team Championship. We are on board now with Polden. And she has the whole shot around uh, Charlie's in and Charlie's out and on to Park Straight, of course. She got herself the first ever Aprilia Super Team win at Snetterton last round on the Saturday, but then didn't manage it on Sunday, and she's got some uh, trouble there. And there's a rider down in the background, yellow flags, but Rory Skinner's gone underneath Georgina Polden, and Rory Skinner, the championship leader, leads this race now. Joe Thompson, it looks like, has gone up into third place. Oliver O'Flaherty, it is, uh, number 52, that has gone down over at uh, Charlie, so hopefully... Uh, the young rider is okay, but out of the gooseneck and downhill into Mansfield. It is still Rory Skinner that leads this one. Leading the Nitro newcomers, as we just see there, 73, Cameron Tenting Jenkins. is Shane Faber, number 24. Uh, one of the riders that uh, rides under the JDF banner. Same team as uh, Ben Luxton. There he is, number 24, just going through Black Helmet. Uh, ben Luxton, of course, leading the 450 championship. And Faber is slowly but surely really getting closer and closer to the overall podium. He's finished every single race so far this season. He leads the newcomers. Other newcomers to look out for, uh, the likes of Daniel Booth, Miles Wasley, TJ Toms, Jordan Gill, Cameron Fraser, etc., etc. But the overall Super Team Championship at the moment is being led by the race leader, Joe, uh, sorry, Roy Skinner. Georgina Polden is in second, Joe Thompson. It is in third place. There's TJ Toms, number seven, just going through. Number 93 is Thomas Burnett, number eight. Uh, there is Miles Wassley, those newcomers in their first full season of racing. And uh, as the season goes on, you'll see them getting closer and closer to these guys at the front. Skinner it is that leads from Georgina Polden. Then Thompson, number 24, is Faber in fourth place. There's Ed Best. He's got Jordan Boyle up there as well. Boyle uh, with the yellow wheels. Ed Best with the purple wheels. Of course, all of these machines absolutely identical. Rory Skinner burst onto the scene in the Super Teams the last round of 2013 and actually won a race in his first ever meeting at Donington Park, the GP circuit. So we knew that uh, he was going to be something special this year. Georgina Polden, it was her first full season of motorcycle racing on tarmac last year. She's come across from motocross. So... It's uh, really been pretty new, this series, to both of these riders, but look at them at the moment. And it is great to see a young lady so competitive at the sharp end of an Aprilia Super Team race. Joe Thompson still in third. We're on board now with Georgina Polden exiting the hairpin and into Barn Corner. You can see slightly off camera there, but flat out on these machines. You go down onto the start finish straight, cross the line, and complete another lap. They've got a decent gap. Back to Joe Thompson in third. He's just struggling to get it to Ed Best. Jordan Boyle. Ed Best is 44. Jordan Boyle, 37. Back on board there with Holden. Around Charlie's. And now she'll try and get in the slipstream of Rory Skinner on the park straight here. And she's doing a good job here. She's just got to find the bubble of air that might just help her out. But she's running out of room. Here she comes up the inside. 
into park corner, and that is how to execute the perfect overtaking move using slipstream. Georgina Bolden goes into the lead of this race as they go around Chris Kerb and now into the gooseneck, which on a super team bike is quick. I'm just going to shush a minute here and hear them going into this. There is Skinner up the inside. You can hear how late they leave it. They pretty much just roll off, chuck it down a gear and go flat out. That is so quick through the gooseneck, even on these machines. But Rory Skinner has managed to go up the inside into the gooseneck. There is TJ Toms and Dan Drayton, number 34, just behind. They go down into Mansfield Corner and up towards the chicane here at Cadwall Park. Mansfield there, you've got to be so careful of uh, decking the bike out now. Uh, there must have had, uh, must have been a moment somewhere out front. Georgina Polden has just lost a bit of time there uh, on the tail of Rory Skinner. Ian Newton, the man behind the success of the Aprilia Super Teens, informed me that only two riders have ever raced at the sharp end, I should just point out, fighting for wins in the Super Teens, not using a steering damper. One is Casey Stoner, two is Georgina Polden. So uh, it's an interesting little stat that, and certainly coming over the mountain, you'll know about it if you've not got a steering damper. So that was an interesting uh, one there from Ian Newton that he threw at me just before the start of this race. But at the moment, it makes uh, no difference at all Roy Skinner, it is, that has the advantage, and he really has stretched it out now over Georgina Polden, number 27. Third place there at the moment goes to Joe Thompson, but he's coming under a bit of pressure here from Ed Best, number 44. There's also Jordan Boyle in the mix, but Skinner here looking in control. He took the championship lead overnight after that uh, DNF from Joe Thompson here number 74 but the pair of them have been trading places all season long Thompson just cannot keep up with the front two at the moment it is Skinner that has the advantage through the mountain up and over the hill and then into Hall Benz massive prospect Rory Skinner I think you're going to be seeing plenty of him in the future through Hall Benz nice and easy does it he's got a bit of traffic up ahead but he's got a nice enough comfortable gap ahead of Georgina Polden not to worry about that and I think Polden is going to sell off for 20 points here in second place uh, there is Shane Faber number 24 sixth place overall leads the Nitro newcomers he leads the championship he's leading the race overall last that flag is out there for Rory Skinner and he's got a well he's already dealt with the back markers so uh, as easy as that for Skinner up into Coffey's corner and seeing the last lap flag there is Georgina Polden Second place for her at the moment into Coppice. She won't uh, obviously make ground on Rory Skinner, who looks like he's set for 25 points. But I'll tell you what, she's in third overall and she'll close in on Joe Thompson. And she'll be hoping Ed Best can, or Jordan Boyle can maybe squeeze Thompson out. And here comes Ed Best, in fact. And Ed Best with the Union Jack on the side of his helmet there. And the Purple Wheels has gone underneath Joe Thompson. So Thompson has gone from getting 16 points to 13 there. And all of this will help Polden in second overall, who is closing on Joe in the championship. Uh, down out of the gooseneck and into Mansfield. And Thompson looks to try and fight back, but he's not got enough here. And Jordan Boyle in fifth there might just have a say in this as well. Meanwhile, Rory Skinner goes over the mountain for the final time here in the first Aprilia Super Team race and into Hall Benz. He's got this one in the bag. It's a shame that we were denied an excellent fight between himself and Polden all the way to the finish line but Rory Skinner really dominant in this class and uh, dominant in this race I tell you what I think Ed Best yeah he's timed that perfectly and Best is going to take third but Boyle might just have a nibble at fourth across the line we go though Skinner puts a lap on Jack Reed, but wins here the first Aprilia Super Team race and looks delighted he's looking over his shoulder for Georgina Polden She's seven seconds down the road. She set off a second in the end. A good solid 20 points for her. Ed Best did take third ahead of Joe Thompson. And then it's Jordan Boyle fifth and Faber in sixth winning the newcomers. There is the top three overall. Skinner in the middle, Polden on the left and Best on the right. And in the newcomers, the winner is Shane Faber ahead of Daniel Booth and Miles Wassley. Miles, third place in the Nitro Newcomers here at Cadwell Park. The sun's out. You enjoy that race? Uh, yeah, it was a really, really close race and actually... Um Dropped back quite a few places and then managed to caught up with TJ. And on the last lap, I didn't want the inside into Coppets, and yeah, it was a good race. Anyone to thank? 
Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank um, Mum and Dad, Aprilia Dunlop Fun Sport, John Brash and Repticast Racing. Well done to you. We'll uh, move on to Daniel Boone now. Daniel, uh, second place for you in the newcomers. Really close racing, that. Yeah, it was a really good race because I started on 19th on the grid, so I managed to catch them up at the start and then I had a good battle with Daniel Drayton and TJ Toms. So, yeah, it was a good race. Can I thank um, Longton Batteries, Design Iteration, um, Long... Wait, I've heard someone about JRJ Supplies, Marine Industrial Mouldings, Mum and Dad, uh, Thunder Sport Apilia and Dunlop. Well done to you, and we bring on to brings on to the Nitro Newcomer winner Shane Faber. Shane, you're leading the Nitro Newcomer Championship. Slightly lonely race in the end for you, but a, a solid win. Yeah, yeah, I had a half decent race. I I was battling with Ed and fourth, but my bike was misfiring, misfired up the mountain, so I lost a lot of time, but still managed to get pole. Oh, not pole first, sorry. Anyone to thank? Yeah, I like to say a big thanks to uh, Dunlop for all the tyres, um, Ash Honda. Lynx Cafe, Jordan Faber building contractors, John Davis, Mary for my pit board, uh, my whole team, Aprilia and Fun Sport. Third place overall in the Aprilia Super Teens, Ed Best. Ed, that was a great race actually, uh, and you had a great battle there with Joe Thompson and a few others as well, but you got there in the end. Yeah, last lap I managed to outbreak Joe going into that thing. It was just all about keeping him not going from under me, so. We managed to hit a back marker going into one of the last corners, which gave me a little bit of a gap, so I could win in quite comfortably. But yeah, great race for me. Right. Anyone to thank? I'd like to thank Spenders Motorcycles, Harbour Autos, John King for all his help, and Thunder Sport, Aprilia, and Donington. Well done to you. Thanks, Ed. We'll move on to Georgina Polden now. Uh, Georgina, you got a win here yesterday. Didn't quite manage it here today. It looked like you were on his tail, um, but you went into Hall Benz and uh, back marker just got in your way there. Not a lot you could do about it. No, exactly. I uh, had a good battle with Rory all the way through, and uh, just unfortunately, like you said, uh, back marker just got caught up, but never mind. <laughs> Change of tactics for race two? Yeah, we're uh, trying a better tactic for race two and hopefully come out on top. <laughs> And plenty of people to thank. Yeah, I'd like to thank King's Soil Centre, Putinine Oils, Arc Scaffolding, 151s, Mum and Dad, Craig, um, Aprilia, Fun Sport and Dunlop. Well done to you, Georgina. And now on to the race winner, Rory Skinner. Um, well, like you just heard there, uh, you probably wouldn't have known that uh, Georgina got held up just behind the back marker, but it was a great move by you to just peel underneath the back marker going into all bends, and that won it for you. Yeah, I don't have a pit board, so I didn't know how far ahead it was of Georgina, so I just kept on pushing and pushing, and I won in the end. Anyone to thank at all, Roy? Yeah, I'd like to thank Skinner Motorcycles, Strathairn Tires, Scott Spearings, Scott Leathers, Motorrack Racing, WK Bikes, and Bennett's for all the sport. Also, I'd like to thank my mum, dad, Bill and Phil, and everybody else's sport. Good luck for race two. Thank you. Don't go anywhere, folks. Coming up after the break, it's race two for the Aprilia RRV 450s. Welcome back to Cadwell Park for the final part of the Aprilia Challenge and what better way to finish it off than to bring you the second race from the Aprilia Super Teams. Jordan Boyle on uh, pole position. Nice to see him up there. Can he get himself on the main podium? And certainly what he's looking for. Georgina Polden in second. She's been a winner on Saturdays twice now, but uh, not on a Sunday yet. Could it be her race here? There's Rory Skinner though, championship leader. He won the first one looking for another one. Second row there, Ed Best on the left and Joe Thompson. So they'll be trying to get themselves up there. Joe Thompson, of course, second in the championship at the moment. Shane Faber, number 24, is sixth on the grid. The JDF rider, currently leader of the Nitro Newcomers. Away from the line we go and heading down towards Coppice Corner for the first time. And it's going to be Rory Skinner, I think, that has the advantage as we head around Charlie's on board with Georgina Polden now. She's in second, and yep, that's Skinner. You can just see him up ahead. Onto the back straight we go. Polden desperately trying to find the slipstream to make sure she clings onto Skinner for as long as possible uh, this time. Not sure what happened to Polden. I understand that the reason why she uh, fell back behind Skinner in race one was that she just got stuck in a bit of traffic. Uh, towards the end of the race and just thought well I'll set off a second and rolled off and let Skinner do his thing so she's still got 20 points but it's Skinner that leads from Polden Thompson third Faber fourth and it's Jordan Boyle in fifth place number 12 and number 99 just going down uh, the hill there 
Number 12, Jordan Gill, a newcomer, new to us. And Chris Gray, number 99. Skinner, Polden, Thompson, Faber, Boyle and Best. That's uh, your top six. There's Daniel Drayton, just up ahead of uh, Daniel Booth, number 46. Going well into Hall Bend as we go. The top six fly through. Then it's TJ Toms, number seven. Nice to see TJ up there, not a newcomer. Looks like he's set for a podium here, all things being well. Numbers 5 and 66 just go through. Edgar Machado is number 5, and Cameron Fraser. I have to apologise to Edgar Machado. Um, when we were having a guessing game where he came from, uh, I was closest, although I was told by Thundersport Sid that he was Italian. Uh, needs to say, Sid was wrong. And uh, apologies to Mr Machado and family, because they're, of course, from Portugal. So, uh, <laughs> never mind, Sid. There is Faber, leader of the newcomers. He's uh, well in the mix here, just up ahead of uh, Jordan Boyle with the yellow wheels and also Ed Best. But this is the fight for the race win. Rory Skinner, championship leader, has this one so far ahead of Georgina Polton and Joe Thompson in much better shape for this race than he was in race one. Really in touch with the top two this time. They exit the chicane and come in towards... The bottom of the mountain, left, right, flick. Really easy to actually tuck the front into here. Then over the top of the mountain. Blind crest. If you've uh, never been, or if you've been to Cadwell Park, when the racing stops, you just want to climb to the uh, top of that mountain. You can't believe how blind it is for the riders. But it is special. Um, iconic part of the circuit. Skinner it is that still leads out of the hairpin and into Barn Corner. Another really tricky right hand there here. Easy again to tuck the front. Onto the start, finish straight we go. And the championship leader is looking to do the double here today ahead of Georgina Polden who's just looking to finish ahead of Joe Thompson and try and close in overall in the championship. This is the battle for fourth between Ed Best number 44 and Jordan Boyle who was on pole position and just tries to find a way up the inside into Coppers, but no, the door is closed. Faber there in sixth place, who's a rider I think we really need to keep an eye on in the next few rounds. He leads the newcomers. He's got a huge lead in the newcomer championship. Um, you'd put your house on him to finish as the newcomer champion. There he is, number 24, the JDF rider. John Davis really does know how to find him. Further back, that was number seven, TJ Toms, leading uh, Thomas Burnett. A huge group of riders there, all trying to make some progress. And Rory Skinner down into Mansfield there, coming up to a tail ender. That's Connor Thompson uh, trying to go around the outside of him. Now we're on board with uh, Georgina Polton. She's had to go around the outside into the chicane, so she lost a bit of momentum there as we now come into the bottom of the mountain. We flick left. We flick right, and here you go, folks. Here's the blind crest. Over the hill we go. And oh, dear, oh, dear. And that's, well, we told you earlier. I do not know how she's managed to hold on to that. We told you earlier she does not run the steering damper, and that's what can happen. She lost control of the bike there, went onto the grass. Thank the Lord that she's got motocross experience because she's managed to guide the bike back onto the black stuff. And, uh, well, she lives to fight another day there. She's still in the race. I think she's just about held on to third place. But Georgina Polden, heart in mouth moment there for the female in third place. And now she's going to have a bit on to try and win this. The pair of them there, Joe Thompson in second and Georgina Polden in third. Uh, way back on Skinner and Thompson immediately trying to fight back now. She's going to try and get into the slipstream of Joe Thompson, second in the championship and second in this race. Onto the back straight we go. That ant in the distance is Rory Skinner, who leads this race. Into the slipstream she goes, and she'll try and take the inside line. Thompson tries to defend. It's not going to work. Here we go then. Look at that. They, they leave it later than the one marker board to break, and that's just uh, how quick these guys go on these super teams. Flat out around Chris Curve, and Polden is into second place. There is Ed Best. Currently in fourth, and no, nope, not for much longer. That's Boyle up the inside of him. Shane Faber still hanging on to the tails. I just wonder how long it'll be before Faber makes his way onto the podium overall. Skinner it is that still leads now from Georgina Polden. Well, she made a mess of this last time. She'll certainly make sure she stays in between the white lines this time. But I don't think anyone's going to catch Rory Skinner. Polden will just want to get second place here ahead of Joe Thompson. She's fighting uh, the rider sponsored by Teasdale Motorcycles for second in the championship at the moment. Of course, both of these riders still with every chance to win it overall. 
anything ha can happen in the Aprilia Super Teens, but across the line to finish another lap. Pit board out there, that's uh, Georgina's dad just holding out the pit board, uh, letting you know the situation, but when you're embroiled embroil in battles like this, I'm not sure you take much notice of what's going on in the pit board. There's Cameron Tenting Jenkins, right? It's going well wide there. Oh, and that's Dan Drayton, who's just gone uh, wide on the exit of the hairpin. He's gone down and uh, he's just switching the bike off there. Well, there was a number of riders, there's so many of them going into the hairpin. It was inevitable that they were going to get pushed wide. There's a change there as Joe Thompson has moved back up into second head of Polden. Uh, but it looked like initially TJ Toms just ran a bit wide and then it was almost like a concertina effect behind him. Uh, unfortunately for Dan Drayton, he is out of the race. On that same lap, lap Liam Delves went missing, so hopefully Liam's up and okay. But it looks like we're going to see a double win here for Rory Skinner. The young Scottish rider is going to head into the next round of Thundersport at Alton Park on Saturday the 21st of June with a decent championship lead ahead of Joe Thompson. No matter where Thompson finishes here, he'll still be second in the championship, but there's no doubting that Polden overall here at Cadwell Park has closed in. There is the battle for fourth between Ed Best and Jordan Boyle. They've switched again. Ed Best getting quicker all the time this season. Jordan Boyle may be a bit frustrated that he's not had more of a nibble at the podium having set uh, pole position. But last lap flag is out then. And uh, well, this is pretty much decided in the top three. Reporting Polden here in third. She'll certainly do everything she can now on this final lap to get second place, but neither of them are catching Skinner unless he makes a huge mistake on this final lap, which is unlikely. Here he is into Park Corner. Very smooth style for young Rory Skinner. Of course, you never really know uh, whether these guys are going to be stars of the future. It really depends on how they deal with transitions to other bikes and uh, the fortunes that's and the decisions they make. But he's certainly got the makings of something pretty special. Rory Skinner, so has Joe Thompson and Georgina Polden in second and third place. Down into the chicane, Rory Skinner goes, and Boyle is back into fourth place ahead of Ed Best now. This one's going all the way to the line between these two. Now into the nearest part of the circuit, the chicane here at Cadwell Park. Skinner though, already into Hall Benz, and uh, it's all over. And Skinner's going to take the double here. 50 points on Sunday for Rory Skinner here at Cadwell Park. Surely just a couple of corners to deal with now. And he's still pushing it into Barn Corner. Number 11, Rory Skinner. He's going to do the double. He's done it. Cadwell Park, 50 points, two wins for Rory Skinner. The championship leader does it again here. Looking back there in second place. It's going to be Thompson this time. Georgina Polden after that heart-stopping moment earlier in the race. Has to settle for third place. Uh, this time around, at best it was in the end that managed to get himself back ahead of Jordan Boyle to finish in fourth place. And Faber, once more, finishing in sixth place, he wins the Nitro Newcomers. Top three on the podium then, Skinner, the winner, ahead of Joe Thompson and Georgina Polden. And in the Newcomers, it's Faber, Daniel Booth and Jordan Gill. Now then, in the points, going into Alton Park, Skinner it is that has the advantage from Joe Thompson. Polden has closed in in third. In fourth place, it is Boyle and Faber and Ed Best. And in the newcomers, a huge lead for Shane Faber. TJ Toms it is in second place ahead of Wasley, Booth, Jack Reed and Cameron Fraser. Third place in the Nitro Newcomers here at Cadwell Park. Uh, Jordan, a, a great race there. You must be delighted with the uh, trophy at the end of the day. Yeah, very happy. It's my second trophy this weekend, so I'm happy with that. And uh, Cadwell Park as a, as a whole, what do you think? Great, great track. It's my first time here, so it's pretty good. Like Championship leader Shane Faber. Shane, you were so close to tagging onto that group with uh, Ed Best and Jordan Boyle there, but either way, you've got yourself 25 points again. Yeah, I had a, I had a really good race. I'm just getting, I'm getting quicker every time I go out, so re really good, yeah. I think it's not going to be long before you're battling these guys at the sharp end as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, at Olsen, we can, um, yeah, we can tag on and hopefully be at the front getting some podiums. Uh, once again, it was looking like it was going to be uh, quite a spicy race between uh, you three, and then you decided to go uh, grass tracking at the top of the mountain. Yeah, um, come over the mountain, um, and the front started 
wobbling about. Um, luckily, just to hold on to it, but Joe shot past me in second place. Um, tried to stay with him, but was racing, had a good battle with him. Was your heart in your mouth for a moment? Yeah, I tensed up a bit, um, stopped breathing, but <laughs> once it recovered, it was all right. <laughs> Joe, it's been a bit of an up and down weekend for you, but you must be pleased to end it with a podium. Yeah, we've had a pretty bad weekend. I crashed in race two and I've had some bike problems all weekend, but it's all sorted now and it was a really good race. Um, this might be my last Super Teen race, I'm not sure, because we've been offered a Moto free ride and it might conflict with Super Teen, so we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, race winner, uh, championship leader, Rory Skinner. I suppose you don't know what's going on, all this drama behind you. You're just uh, keeping it pinned at the front. A fantastic weekend for you. Yeah, it's been a great weekend. I have some awesome battles with Georgina. Uh, yesterday, battling places, she won a race, but today, I beat her. Is this your first time at Cadwell Park as well? Uh, I was here two weekends ago, but this is my first time with Thundersport at Cadwell Park. And you're looking forward to the next one at Alton? Yeah, this is really looking forward to it. Hopefully me and Georgina can have some good battles. That's it then from Cadwell Park from Lincolnshire. We move to Cheshire. It's Alton Park for the next round. We'll see you then.